were diving in the waters of a man-made lake, created when a stream was dammed and the waters backed up into an ancient valley. Once this had been mining country, but now the mine shafts were dark recesses where fish lay their eggs. One of my companions was Al Turner. I was training him for the permanent job of underwater maintenance. The other was a young doctor, Tom Stevenson. He was interested in diving as a sport. Turner was at the entrance to the inundated mine when trouble came. Dr. Stevenson and I got him out of there as fast as we could. But we hadn't seen anything like real trouble yet. Any better now, huh? Yeah, I, I guess so. Good thing you got a hard skull, boy. Hey! Hey down there! Help! There's been an accident! My little girl! Please help! There's been an accident! My little girl! Help! Please! <laughs> My little girl, she's trapped in a well. I turned my head and suddenly she was gone. Where? Where is she? Over here. Cindy. Cindy, baby. Cindy, can you hear me? Daddy, Daddy, I can't sleep. I lost my job. Are you hurt? Get her out of there. You've got to. How far down is she? I don't know. It's hard to tell. It might be 100 feet or more. we got to get some air to her. How long has she been down there? It, it just happened. Mike, this isn't a well. It's too narrow. It must be an air shaft leading down to one of those old mines. I don't know how long she's going to be able to breathe down there. There's an air compressor in the back of my car. And 100 foot of hose. That ought to do it. I'll bring the car up here. Good hour. There's a motel up the highway. We gotta call the police. I'll call them. <laughs> You've got to get her out. You've so got to. to it's not gonna help. Listen, you just keep talking to her. You understand? Just keep talking to her. Huh? Cindy, remember the time. It's a miracle how people respond to an emergency. For practically no time, it seemed, dozens of volunteer workers had assembled and heavy drilling equipment was at work trying to sink a shaft to reach the trapped child. Chief, what's the situation? Oh, we can't get anybody down that shaft, Mike. It's too narrow. But we're drilling diagonally. The man will be able to get down there soon and bring her out. It shouldn't be long now. How far down would you... Oh! Let me go! Let me go! What are you going to do? Mike, there isn't anything we can do until we hear from the Geological Institute in Springtown. No, no, it'll take too long. If we're going to get her out alive. We've got to act now. Well, there's nothing I'd like better. But until we learn the extent of that damage down there, drilling is out of the question. But this whole cliff would slide down into the lake. She's trapped in an air shaft. Yeah. It's got to connect that uh, mine tunnel below, huh? I know, Mike, but that mine tunnel is now underwater. I know that. That gives me a chance to do something now. Mike! <laughs> As I entered the water, I was hopeful. There was no guarantee that Cindy was still alive. 
But if she were, I was sure that I could get into the old mine shaft toward which she had fallen. The mine entrance wasn't deep. I swam inside. An underwater attempt to locate the child is being made by Mike Nelson, the expert skin diver who helped in the earlier attempt to rescue the little girl. He's trying to get to the air shaft through one of the submerged mines under Fenton's Point. Hawkins, call my nephew. I got to talk to him. About what? The cave-in at Fenton's Point. That skin diver ain't gonna make it. I worked in them gopher holes 35 years ago. I know. I do not intend to bother Dr. Stevenson with any more of your nonsense. Oh, now, look here, Hawkins. I've done some pretty crazy things here in the past, but this here is on the level. We called Dr. Stevenson when you disappeared and were found pitching horseshoes in the park. We called him again when you locked yourself up in the bathroom because you didn't want a salt-free diet. And we called him again when you sounded the fire alarm and brought the whole fire department down here. Well, I do not intend to call Dr. Stevenson this time. Time and water had made a shambles of the mine shaft. I had to pick my way between fallen timbers and rock slides. This was the end of the line. The debris blocked the tunnel completely. I could go no further. With sinking heart, I gave up and started back. Then it happened. Tanks were caught under the fallen timbers. I couldn't budge them. My regulator was damaged too. I was having trouble getting air. I had only one course of action. I slipped out of my harness, sucked what air I could from the mouthpiece, held my breath and started up, hoping that I could last till I reached the surface. to your equipment. I had to ditch it. Uh, the tunnel, it caved in. I can't reach her. Well, if you can't reach Cindy Mike, nobody can. I just got a call from Springtown. Positively no drilling above. I'm afraid that closes the case, Mike.
You didn't think I could do it, did you, Hawkins? <laughs> Mike, you did all you could. Forget it. Anybody notified her father yet? No. He's under a mild sedative. There'll be plenty of time to tell him when he wakes up. Here, put this on. Hello, Dr. Stevenson. Who? All right. Yeah, put him through. Hello, Uncle Jim. What's up? Yeah, yeah, I was right there when it happened. Skin diver? You mean Mike Nelson? <laughs> yeah, I'll say. He just about didn't make it. No, no, they haven't been able to reach her, Uncle Jim. I, uh, I think it's just about all over. What do you mean? Where? Well, how could there be? Yeah, all right. Look, Jim, stay where you are. We'll be right over. But this had better be on the level. What's up? Little Cindy just may have a chance after all. Let's go. You sure about this now? Sure as I can be after 35 years. I got here as soon as I could, Mike. Oh, Uncle Jim has given us a fresh lead. Uh, you know Police Chief Pullman, Uncle Jim? Howdy. Hello, Jim. Uh, it seems that uh, Jim was one of the early developers of the mine where Cindy is trapped. And, uh, uh, Jim, you mind explain it again, please, huh? Well, like I was telling them, the structure in them cliffs around Stanton's Point is real tricky. Devil Rock, we used to call it. That's how I know that Mike here didn't have no chance. Here, look here. This is where Mike went in here. There's lots of shale in there, real soft. Oh, well, you can say that again. Yeah, Pete Callahan and me had the same doggone trouble you did in 25, until we found us some better ground over around here. Well, that's that's way around the point in Fisherman's Cove. Yeah, that's Mark Tumbleby, huh? Yeah. Uh, that's about 500 feet from the air shaft here, isn't it? That's right. And that's the only way. Uh, Jim tells us that the uh, rock here in Tunnel B is pretty solid, so it won't cause us any trouble. At least not till we get to the shaft, huh? Right. Well, Mike, that is if there is an air shaft left. It's only chance. You mean you're thinking of going down there again? Do you feel well enough? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, all right, but you can't go down alone. You have to take somebody with you. Tom, you go with me? Uh, what do you say, Tom? I may need a doctor down there. You got one. I'll take it with me, huh? Yeah, sure. Twenty minutes later, Tom and I were in the water at Fisherman's Cove. Uncle Jim had told us that the mine tunnel should be about 30 feet below. It was. Uncle Jim was right about the geological structure, too. This tunnel was solid. A couple of hundred feet inside, I started looking toward the surface. That's where Uncle Jim had promised that the tunnel slanting upward would bring us to a dry spot. <laughs> the air was so foul that we couldn't breathe it. I was glad we were carrying our own supply along with us.
Check that wall back there. But be careful. We don't want to start any cave ins. It's a waste of time, Mike. Nobody can help her now. Cindy! Cindy's dead. I'm a doctor and I'm used to facing facts, Mike. Haven't you ever operated on a patient you thought was dying? You kept working, you didn't give up? He lived? Mm-hmm. But I know a dead one when I see one. I'm leaving. I didn't blame Tom, but I couldn't give up now. I knew that somewhere on that broken rock above me was a tiny child. Dead or alive, she had to be there. Cindy? I kept calling for Cindy. The air shaft into which she had fallen should have ended in the tunnel here but there was no sign of an air shaft. Nothing but tumbled rock and broken dirt. A breath of fresh air swept through the tunnel. I knew the shaft to the surface was open. And then I saw it. Cindy! Cindy? Cindy, you're gonna be all right now. Sweetie, I'm afraid of your daddy. I'm gonna get you out of here. You hear me, sweetie? Now listen, sweetie. I'm gonna go get some help. I'll be right back. Cindy, I'll be right back now. needed Tom. Cindy seemed to be in a state of shock. She might be seriously injured. She was out of my reach, too. I needed help to climb to her. I was proud of Tom when I found him already on his way back. We raced back to the tunnel. I 
found her. She's alive. But I needed your help. Did she hurt? I don't know. I think she's in shock. She won't talk. Hi, sweetie. Told you you'd be back, huh? We're gonna get you out of here now. Come on, Rick. You fall, I'll catch you. Come on, put your foot down. Come on, down. Come on. That's a girl. Swing your other foot over now. That's right. Now listen, sweetie. You just, you just, you just fall, and I'll, and I'll catch you, sweetheart. That's it. Come on, fall right forward. I prepared Cindy for the underwater trip. She would have to keep the mouthpiece clamped down while I held her nose. I prayed that she wouldn't panic. She was a real little soldier. Maybe it was shock, maybe she was just a natural. But she did everything that she had to to survive underwater. Without fear without panic. Wrong with her that a few seconds with her daddy won't cure. Forgot your girlfriend again. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is fun and adventure for young and old, but it can be dangerous. So know the sport well and don't take any chances. Be with you next week for another exciting sea hunt.